Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, in a dense forest beneath the roots of the fir tree, there lived four little rabbits. Their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail always listened to their mother. But Peter, on the other hand, was very naughty. His curiosity always got him into trouble. One day, the mother was going out to shop for some groceries. Now, my dears, you must lend me your ears. You may go into the fields or down the lane, but not at McGregor's garden, for it will bring you only pain. But why, mother? Your father went there once, only for once. I must say, to get us celery, broccoli, and some grains to make our day. We never knew a day like this would come to bid a goodbye, for Mrs. McGregor turned him into a fresh pie. Oh, oh mother. mother, how, how sad. sad. Now run along, kids. Don't get into mischief, especially you, Peter. It's time, and now I am going out. The mother left to the market, while the kids remained in the house deciding what to do. Let's go down the lane. There's a beautiful flower garden. We will dance, play, and make beautiful garlands. I love flower garlands. Me too. Yeah! Broccoli, celery, hmm. I should go to McGregor's garden. It's been so long since I've chomped on some yummy celeries and strawberries. Mmm, I'm drooling already. Off I go to McGregor's. McGregor's? Don't be silly. Mother just warned us about how dangerous it is. Come with us to the garden, Peter. We are going there to play. Spring's here, and there are a lot of flowers blooming. But... Flowers aren't strawberries and celery that can satisfy my hunger. You can all go and play with flowers. I'm going to McGregor's delicious garden. Peter dashed away in no time. Here, Here we, we go, go again. Peter ran in excitement on the lane that led to McGregor's garden. <sighs> Daisy veggies, here I come. Peter reached Mr. McGregor's garden and contemplated how to get in. Then he got a wild idea. Easy peasy squeezy. Peter slipped through the bottom of the gate and stood there in awe. Wow! And here we are, at McGregor's garden. It was humongous from Peter's point of view. He could see some large turnips, tree-sized broccolis, and his most anticipated, celeries. Goodness, I'm so blessed today. I'm going to eat everything I could. But before I start, I think I should pick some mulberries and drop them so that I don't lose the way. Peter chomped on the celery, then the broccolis. He ate the strawberries the moment they caught his eyes. He also kept dropping small mulberry pieces. Nom, 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 nom. Upon seeing Peter Rabbit eat his heart out, a bluebird came to him. Tweet, tweet. Hello, Bunny. You are very young. I do not wish you to be a delight for Mr. McGregor's tongue. Tweet. So, here's my advice. Don't think twice. Leave before you pay the price. Oh, come on, birdie. I don't think it's going to be that bad. Oh, here's some grains I stole on the way. It's surely going to be a tasty treat for you. Oh, Bunny! Tweet, tweet! How do I explain to you that it's danger that you're putting yourself through? You're too afraid, Birdie? Well, I'm a brave boy. The bird nods his head and flies off. Peter ate too much. He felt slightly sick in his stomach. Ha! Maybe I should give this eating some rest. But let's carry some beans for a light snack. Peter found a stone to rest himself on. He took small bites of the beans he got. 
Wow! This town is so mushy. I could stay in this paradise for days. Peter rested and looked up at the sky. Such a beautiful day. The sky's so clear. The birds are flying. The sun's so bright. And there's an angry face too. Angry face? Where did that come from? So, it seemed like Peter was not resting on the stone, but on McGregor's foot. Yup! This isn't a stone! It's made of leather! <coughs> oh, um, hi, Mr. McGregor. I, um, hope you're having a um, good day. Run! <laughs> Stop thief! Peter panicked and sprung out of McGregor's sight, leaving the happy Indians behind in fright. He ran and hid behind a strawberry bush. Once you catch my eye, I'm gonna turn you into a pie! Yelp! What did I do? Uh, uh, idea! Let me distract Mr. McGregor and get out of the gate! Peter picked up a stone and threw it on another bush, making the leaves rustle. McGregor turned away and looked with a grin. Oh, you silly rabbit! Watch me catch you in one second! McGregor reached out to the strawberry bush he heard the rustle from and split it to see through. Got ya! Huh? Billions of bursting blueberries! Where did this rabbit go? As Mr. McGregor exclaimed, he found Peter's tiny shoes left behind. This cued where Peter ran. You may think you're smart, but wait till I turn you into a rabbit turk! McGregor immediately spotted Peter Rabbit running towards the gooseberry net. Peter Rabbit ran on his four legs, much faster without his shoes now, and climbed up the gooseberry net. I hope he doesn't get me here. But Mr. McGregor came yet again. He tried to catch Peter, but Peter moved left, right, and sprung out of sight, <laughs> leaving Mr. McGregor tangled in the net. I put these gooseberry nets to keep the birds away, not for me to get stuck like this. Ah, this rabbit thief needs to leave right away. As Mr. McGregor struggled to get out, Peter sprinted to the tool shed. <sighs> Peter looked around in haste and... I don't have time to waste. I need to get into the water can. <sighs> Peter reached the water can. He noticed that it was filled with water, but at the same time, he could hear Mr. McGregor's furious footsteps. Oh boy, he escaped the gooseberry net. One, two, three, tick! Peter kicked the can, and the water spilled. He did a great job, but then he couldn't stop the noise he caused, which made his whereabouts obvious to Mr. McGregor. Oh, so you're hiding in the tool shed. Noisy rabbit! Wait till I come and get you! This time I am thinking of a rabbit stew! Mr. McGregor went into the tool shed. He lifted the pot, he looked below the mop, and then his eyes caught the shivering water can. Aha! I found you, rabbit! Now you go straight into my dinner! Peter heard Mr. McGregor and ran along with the water can. <gasps> He went left, and then right, stomping Mr. McGregor's feet. Thousand twisted turnips! Ouch! And stormed away out of his sight, leaving Mr. McGregor jumping in pain. Peter finally made an escape with the water can. He huffed, puffed, and removed the can out of his head. He then realized that he blindly ran into dense bushes. He didn't know where he was. Peter was very tired. He lost his shoes, he dirtied his jacket, and his fur had mud all over. 
Oh no, I'm so tired and dirty. How do I get home like this? Who is this? I told you so! Tweet! This garden of Mr. McGregor is nothing but terror. Come, let me take you. Peter agreed, but before he hopped on, he wanted to do something petty. He removed his jacket, covered a turnip, and placed two pea pods to mimic his bunny ears. It will be fun when Mr. McGregor thinks he finally found me. <laughs> Come on, Rabbit! Don't you think the mischief you did is enough? Hop in before Mr. McGregor sees us! Whoa! That didn't rhyme. Peter hops on the bird and they fly towards the gate. Mr. McGregor, meanwhile, spotted Rabbit in the bushes. Uh -huh. Mr. McGregor pulled the pods and was fooled, just like how Peter wanted. Uh, you got away quite easily this time, Rabbit. The next time you come here, you'll have no escape. Mr. McGregor stomped his way back home, tired. The bluebird dropped Peter out of Mr. McGregor's gate. It's evening already, Rabbit. Head straight home. You're going to get your mama worried. As you're covered in so much snow. Yes, Birdie. Off I go back home. Thank you for the ride. Anytime, child. Peter walked into the forest, back to his home. Peter knocked on the door and his mother opened. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail had blackberries and cream for supper, served on their plates. Hello there, Peter. You came right before supper. Goodness gracious! Mother sees Peter's condition and gasps. Tell me, Peter, what happened to you? Your naughtiness has reached its heights. For it is the second time you have lost your shoes and jacket in a fortnight. His naughtiness took him to McGregor's garden. What? Yes, Mother. He went away to eat there. He didn't come with us to the garden today. Mother noticed that Peter had become very tired. So she took him in to clean him and put him to bed. She then prepared some chamomile tea for him. and he looked around. He saw celery, broccoli, and beans at the kitchen counter. How did you get these, Mama? These are from Aunt Marilyn's garden down the lane. Darling, and mind my words, they are much better than McGregor's. Peter realized how silly he was. His mother took him to bed and gave him a dose of the chamomile tea. One tablespoonful at bedtime, and you'll be fresh tomorrow. But what about my blackberries and cream? Nah, Peter. You'll only get chamomile tea today. No blackberries and cream for mischievous rabbits. Now go off to sleep and wake up fresh tomorrow. Also, I hope you remember this day, because this is what happens when you get into such dangerous situations. Okay, Mama. Peter Rabbit felt bad and then slept off. His mother went back to Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail to accompany them and eat delicious blackberries and cream. 